Okay, it's time again for the Press Box Podcast. This is episode number 109, our college football recap for week 13. Uh, College football is coming close to the end of the season. Uh, We are now at the point where we have our championship game set for next week. We'll get into that. We'll get into the games from last week that set up these championship games. We're obviously going to talk a little bit about playoff rankings as uh, those are getting closer and closer to knowing who's going to be in and who's not going to be in. And then, of course, we're going to talk a lot about uh, the penultimate coaching changes in college football with two big names leaving their programs to go to other huge programs. So uh, we're going to talk about all that and more. Remember to hit us up on Twitter at PressBoxPod, on Instagram at PressBoxPod, and of course the YouTube channel, The PressBox Podcast. So without further ado, episode 109, College Football Recap Week 13 on The PressBox Podcast. Okay, welcome back to the Press Box Podcast. Hi, I'm your host, Ralph Miranda. I'll be joined by our producer, Nathan Miranda, here shortly. This is our college football recap. We're recapping week 13, which was the final regular season week of college bo- football. I know we've missed a few weeks here uh, over the last three. Uh, I've been out of town, and uh, our schedule just could not uh, mesh where we could do that. But a lot has happened, as many of you know, because you follow college football fairly regularly. Um as, we, as we've been doing every week on our show, uh, we're going to start by going over the playoff standings. Um, this was the final regular season playoff ranking by the College Football Committee. Uh, the final ranking will come out on Sunday after the championship games, the conference championship games, and we'll know who the top four teams are. But we know now um, who has a chance to get in, and, and we'll go over that here in just a minute. So right now, the playoff rankings are like this. Georgia is still the unanimous number one team. They're undefeated at 12-0. Michigan has moved up to number two by virtue of their upset of Ohio State over the weekend. Actually, a pretty big victory uh, by about 15, 20 points. Uh, Alabama is number three. They squeaked out a win in uh, four overtimes over Auburn over the weekend. Cincinnati, uh, the undefeated non-Power 5 team, is sitting at number four. Oklahoma State has jumped over Notre Dame by virtue of their win over Oklahoma. They are now number five. Notre Dame is number six. Ohio State is number seven. And uh, we'll just leave it right there because those are really the only teams that matter. Uh, uh, I'll give you the rest of the top ten. Ole Miss is eight. Baylor's nine. Oregon's ten. So that's pretty much much it. Um, We had some really good games here last weekend, uh, the final regular season weekend. kind of rivalry week, I guess, is where a lot of the teams play each other. You know, Georgia plays Georgia Tech, uh, Ole Miss plays Mississippi State, Oregon, Oregon State, so forth and so on. Uh, so we did have some really good games there. Um, as I said, Michigan beat Ohio State 42-27, to which, you know, you want to say it was kind of a surprise, but the game was at Michigan. Uh, Michigan had not beaten Ohio State in the Jim Harbaugh era, uh, which was, uh, gosh, about six or seven years. So that was a big victory for Michigan. <laughs> Uh, knocking off Ohio State. What do you think about that, Nathan? Yeah, like you said, that was uh, the first time that Harbaugh had beat Ohio State, which was big. Um, I guess I, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess I, I probably assumed Ohio State would probably win that game. But so now Michigan, I believe, has to play a um, Iowa. Iowa, right? Right. So right. Uh, they should win that um, and make the playoff, I would think. But I guess you know, there's, I know Iowa has a chance to beat them. Obviously, it's a championship game, so it's a it's a big stage, so they could they could lose. Uh, but I think this. I think we talked about this maybe at one point. Do, don't you think if they would have lost again to Ohio State, um, it may have been more likely that Harbaugh could have left maybe in a year or two? Because this was kind of one. Of, this was kind of their best chance they've yeah. had at a national championship run in recent memory, right? Right. Yeah, I think they had one other one during the Harbaugh era, but then lost obviously lost to Ohio State, and that pretty much yeah. ended it. Uh, yeah, I tend to agree with you, Nathan. I think. I think this was kind of the game Harbaugh had to win uh, to, to kind of solidify his position there at, at Michigan. They did give him a contract extension, I think, last year. So 
it's obvious they want him there. I think he wants to stay there. I still think he's an NFL coach, and I still think that eventually, especially I think if they win the national championship, I, I really believe he'll leave yeah, Michigan. That's what I was thinking. Not so much that they don't want him, but right. I felt like if, if if he if he would have screwed this run up and they would have lost Ohio State, let's say not, I feel like he might have been like, okay, this is not this is not for him. It right. goes back to the to the NFL or something. But right. Yeah. If right. they win the championship, same outcome, I think. So that was the big game that last week. Uh, you know, there were some other rivalry games that really weren't that big. Georgia pummeled Georgia Tech forty-five to nothing. Um, gosh, how would you like to be Georgia Tech? Last two games, they've lost by a combined score of one hundred to nothing. Uh, they lost fifty-five to nothing to Notre Dame, and then forty-five to nothing to Georgia. So obviously, Georgia Tech needs some. Some uh, some rebuilding, to put it mildly. Uh, Baylor uh, was able to squeak out a win over Texas Tech. I watched some of that game. Uh, Texas Tech made a valiant effort at the end, and uh, but but couldn't get it done. Um, let's see. Uh, Oregon beat Oregon State. Uh, Michigan State beat Penn State. Uh, the Alabama Auburn game was really the the most interesting game of the weekend. I think uh, Auburn was dominating that game, and you and I were watching some of it. and And they lost their quarterback. He got hurt. Um, they had the, the third string quarterback in there and then he ended up getting hurt. So he's playing on one leg, hobbling around, uh, 10, three lead. And then they just couldn't hold it, um, and lost it in four overtimes. Um, really poor performance by the Auburn defensive coordinator. I think in the way he handled that last drive, Auburn had to go, I mean, Alabama had to go like 98 yards and, uh, and obviously they did it to tie the game and send it to overtime. Yeah. Uh, we, we were watching the second half. I kind of had the feeling Alabama was going to win all game, but, and then, those last couple of drives, it felt like it's definitely Auburn's game now. Right. I mean, like right. I don't see how I don't see how Auburn ended up losing that game. I really don't. Yeah. After Alabama went for it on fourth down and didn't get it, Auburn has the ball now. I think like if just outside of field goal range, I right. think. Right. And they didn't. They get no points out of that. Right. Right. Like, I and I know I I really do think if the quarterback wasn't on one leg, they would have won. Yeah. Because he can't. I mean, they they really had a, they had such a limited playbook of what they could run. I right. mean. The only pass plays he would do, he would catch it and just throw it immediately to the side. He couldn't move at all. Right. And then they ran the ball, but yeah. Even given even given that given that though, I'm su- I'm really surprised they lost because like you said, Alabama had had that long drive at the end and you and the, and they couldn't stop him. And apparently they could stop him all game though. Yeah. Right. Alabama couldn't do anything all game. Like you said, the, the final score is twenty four twenty two, but really it was it was um what was it uh. It was really 10 to 10. Uh, 10 to 10, yeah. yeah. So it was 10 to 3 all game until Correct. the very last drive. Correct. 10 to 10. So Alabama had three points all game, and then they drive. Like, I don't know how long that drive was. It was long, though. It was 98 yards to, 98, to, t- okay. to tie the game. Yeah, there yeah. you go. I really don't know how Auburn lost. They should be ashamed of themselves, really. They really should be. Well, you know, the interesting thing about Alabama, and, you know, obviously there's some SEC bias. I mean, there's no question. And there's definitely some Alabama bias. I mean, you look at Alabama for a, for a minute, okay? They opened the season with a big win over Miami. They st- I don't want to say struggled, but they beat Mercer. 48-14 is really not a good score to beat a Mercer. They should have won that game like 65 to nothing. They struggled to beat Florida by two, uh, pounded Southern Miss, uh, struggled to beat Ole Miss, lost to Texas A&M. Uh, Tennessee was right in the game with them at halftime, and then they end up winning that. They struggled to beat LSU, a team that was 6-6. Six and six. They struggled to beat Arkansas, and they struggled to beat Auburn. Here they are, number three, with one loss. And then you take a look at a team like Oklahoma State or Notre Dame, uh, who has pretty much dominated their last six or seven opponents, especially Notre Dame, and they're sitting at number six. So, you know, I mean, there's obviously, it's obviously the committee wants Alabama in there in some fashion or form, um, which leads me to believe that if they somehow can beat Georgia, they're in, obviously, and Georgia's in. But uh, I think if they lose, they're well, obviously done. I'm glad to see they put Michigan above things. I think Michigan probably deserved to jump above them. Yeah. But I don't understand about. About Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State has one loss, right? Right, right. And then you look at a team like, or I'll just look at Notre Dame as one loss. Right. I'm trying to figure out Oklahoma State. Here. And they beat, I know Oklahoma State beat Oklahoma, but Oklahoma had already got had already been beaten by Baylor before that game. Correct. So they didn't beat an undefeated Oklahoma. Correct. And Oklahoma State lost to Iowa State, I yeah. believe. Yeah. Notre, it, Iowa State, who is, is unranked right now, and Notre Dame lost to number four undefeated Cincinnati. Right. So why is Oklahoma State ahead of Notre Dame? Uh, that's a really good question. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know the answer to that question. I mean, you look at Oklahoma State's schedule. They beat Missouri by Missouri State by seven. They beat Tulsa by five. They beat Boise State by one. They beat Kansas State by eleven. They they beat Baylor by ten. They beat Texas by eight. They lost to Iowa State. Beat Kansas, obviously pounded them. Beat West Virginia by twenty-one. Uh, pounded TCU. Pounded Texas Tech. 
and then beat Oklahoma and, uh, in the, on the last second. They had to stop Oklahoma in the last few seconds of the game. So, yeah, I think I – think, I, that's a good question. I think by virtue of beating Oklahoma and, and – uh, uh, you know, I don't know, Nathan. I really don't have a good answer for that because – Notre Dame should still be ahead of Oklahoma State, I think. Uh, they were all season long, and then now you're jumping them over Notre Dame. Notre Dame beat Stanford 45 to 14. I mean, if you take a look at uh, uh, if you take a look at Notre Dame's schedule, uh, now they, they lost to Cincinnati, but Notre Dame can say, "Hey, we've lost to an undefeated team that's ranked number four. Uh, so how are you telling us that we should be dropped one spot? Yeah. I mean, you look at Notre Dame since their loss to Cincinnati, they beat Virginia Tech, they beat USC. They beat North Carolina. And in the month of November, Notre Dame has given up two touchdowns in the whole month. Now, you know, I mean, to me, that's a pretty yeah. strong showing to be ranked, should be ranked and, number and five. Notre Dame's lost, Notre Dame lost a higher ranked team than Michigan lost to. But yes. I agree with Michigan being over I, Notre I Dame too. because Michigan has beaten more substantial teams than Notre Dame. I, I do. I don't disagree with that yeah. with that yeah. at all. Uh, I'm not, not, it's not do, the problem. Don't you think, like, don't you think if Notre Dame was in the conference? Like, if they were in the Big 12, for example, like Oklahoma State, don't you think Notre Dame would be ahead of Oklahoma State? Don't you think that hurts them sometimes? Yeah, I think Not so. Not that the teams Oklahoma State played are that much better than the teams Notre Dame played, but I think it's looked upon as like, oh, they have one loss and they're in the Power 5 conference. Right. Like, you know, put them a bit. Notre Dame's one loss, but they're not. They're just kind of whatever, independent. So. And we'll get into that a little bit here in a minute when we start talking about some of the coaching changes. Uh, we'll remind me if I don't if I don't touch on that. But, uh, but anyway, um, those were the games from last week. So that sets up our conference championship games coming up this weekend. On Friday night, which this game really doesn't mean anything in the playoff rankings, but the uh, Pac-12 championship, Oregon will play Utah. Remember, Utah hammered Oregon just a few weeks ago, so that's uh, the the Pac-12 championship. Then on Saturday, we get into the meat of it. Uh, Baylor will play Oklahoma State at noon for the Big 12 championship. Um, Utah State and San Diego State for the Mountain West. Uh, Appalachian State and Louisiana Lafayette for the Sun Belt. Then uh, Georgia plays Alabama, the marquee game of the weekend, number one against number three for the SEC championship. Interesting game, Houston and Cincinnati. You know, I took a look at those two teams. Houston's only lost one game. Houston's, if you match their offense and their defense with Cincinnati's, it's a pretty close match. Um, <clears throat> I think that could be a better game than most people will give you give credit for going into it. So that's going to be the AAC championship. Wake Forest will play Pittsburgh for the ACC championship. And then uh, Saturday night at 8 o'clock, uh, another big one, Iowa and Michigan from Lucas Oil Stadium in Indianapolis for the Big Ten Championship. So let's go back to our standings, and I'm going to give you my scenario, and you can tell me what you think after you hear it. Um, again, let me recap. Georgia's one, Michigan's two, Alabama's three, Cincinnati's four, Oklahoma State's five, Notre Dame's six, Ohio State's seven. Now, Georgia's in. I think Georgia is in regardless of what happens, yeah, okay? Yeah. If they win, they're the number one team in the country, seated number one. If they lose, I think they drop no worse than four, maybe even three, depending upon what else happens. Michigan wins, they're in. Alabama wins, they're in. Alabama loses, they're out. Cincinnati wins, they're in. Cincinnati loses, they're out. Oklahoma, now, now here's where it gets interesting. If, if Georgia... Well, obviously, Georgia and Alabama can't both win. So so let's say Georgia wins. Georgia's in. Michigan wins if they're in. Cincinnati wins if they're in. Alabama's out. And the way they've got it right now, if Oklahoma State wins, they're going to be in. Okay? Now, if Oklahoma State loses and Alabama loses, then you have a situation where you'll have Georgia, Michigan, Cincinnati, and Notre Dame will be in there. Now, if the unthinkable happens, <clears throat> if Michigan, Alabama, Cincinnati, and Oklahoma State lose, now <clears throat> you really get, <clears throat> excuse me, you really get the chaos because I doubt this is going to happen. But if it does, okay, if all four of those teams lose, um, I think you're going to see Notre Dame at number two. I think you're going to see Ohio State become the first team with two losses to make it at number three. And then the question is, who do they put at number four? And, uh, well, and I don't know who they'll put it well, in for. All these teams we're, we're talking about now have two losses. Ohio State, That's Ole Miss, Baylor. So I think mm -hmm. if, if what you just said happens, I think they put Alabama in still with two losses. Well, I'll tell you what I think is going to happen. Here's what I think is going to happen. The perfect number four, I bet. If Michigan, Alabama, Cincinnati, and Oklahoma State all lose, okay? Yeah. I think Notre Dame's in, no question. They'll be number two. They'll be number two. Now, yeah. here's the thing, though. Ohio State's not playing in a conference championship game. 
Ole Miss is not playing in a conference championship game. Oregon sitting at number two, playing in a conference championship number game. 10. Number 10, excuse me. If they beat Utah, a team that beat them a few weeks ago, I think Oregon gets in, okay? Because they will have won a conference, okay? Now you start getting into some really difficult areas because look at Iowa at number 13. Is it conceivable that they could jump all the way to number four if they beat Michigan? Yeah. I mean, it's possible, yeah. right? Yeah. I agree they'll, put, they'll probably put – they'll put a team that just won – if, if, if these teams have two losses, they'll put one in that just won a championship game over like Ohio State. I, I would think so. Or but, Ole Miss. But, or I, but remember, they love Ohio State, okay? So, yeah, uh, but – yeah, that's true. Um, and and remember, remember too, Nathan. If Michigan, Alabama, Cincinnati, and Oklahoma State all lose, you got to fill three playoff spots. <clears throat> so if right. Notre Dame gets one, where do, who do the other two go to? Well, I think Ohio State might get one of those. Baylor, Baylor would have would have beaten Oklahoma. That's State. right. That's right. Baylor would they probably get losses. it. You're right. So I feel like there's too many teams with two losses who have who would have upset highly ranked teams in the championship game. Like Iowa and Baylor to, to have their Ohio State be in. I That's think. a good point. And Alabama, they love Alabama like they love Ohio State, but they would have lost the number one undefeated team in an SEC championship. They may get it. You, yeah, but I, I, I find it hard to believe that Alabama sitting at number three, if they lose their second game of we'll the year, one. will drop just one spot. Yeah. I, I, I just don't see that happen. But let's be more realistic. Let's really look at what we think really could happen, okay? Um and actually, the, the thing we just said really could. But but I think probably... Who do you think has the best chance to, to lose? That's you know, Gosh, that's a really good question, Nathan. Um, I think Alabama has the best chance because they're playing Georgia. I think Alabama's Alabama not. has the best chance. I think Oklahoma has a de- Oklahoma State has a decent chance. Baylor's not a bad well, football team. I think all these teams have a decent chance to lose. I agree with that. I, I mean, you know, but Iowa... It's just unlikely that I think it's, it's just playing the odds that, that all it, three... It's, are it's unlikely, win. right. But I Four. think... But I don't think... I don't see a game there that tells me that, that I would say that they're going to win. No. Bang, no questions asked, okay? Well, on Georgia's side, yeah, they would win. Possibly, yeah. That would be the closest yeah, one that I would right. say they're probably definitely right. going to win. But you look at the other ones. I mean, Iowa's no slouch. Iowa's a, a 10-2. and two. I mean, they were ranked yeah. number two early in the season. Uh, you know, they're not a bad football team, yeah. Iowa. And I, and they can beat Michigan. And you, especially when Michigan's coming off such an emotional win, you it, never know what could happen. And all these teams that we're talking about, that are, except for Houston, that are playing these, high, these, these playoff teams – they have some, all these other teams have something more to play for than just ruining their season. That's right. Iowa, Baylor, they could get into it if they beat their team. That's right. So they have a lot more to play for than just like, oh, I hope we can upset their season. Well, I, I think too. Let's let's say this: we know this for sure. Oklahoma State with a win only needs one upset. They only need one of the three at Michigan, Alabama, or Cincinnati to lose to get in. Notre Dame needs two to happen. They have to have two of the four: Michigan, Alabama, Cincinnati. Oklahoma State. Two of those have to lose for Notre Dame to get in. And then for these other teams we've talked about, Baylor, Oregon, Iowa, they have to have uh, pretty much all four of those teams lose uh, to have a chance to get in. And I'm not going to do this, but Houston right now is 21, ranked 21st. They're 11-1. Yeah. and one. yeah, they're not going to. No. They've played the same they play the same schedule as Cincinnati, though, basically, right? Because right? right. they're in the same conference. They haven't played, I guess, a team like Notre Dame. No. But they're basically playing the same schedule. Right. And I know they're not going to move them up, but they lost their opening game to Texas Tech, Houston. After that, they've won out. But, again, I'm just wondering, like, they're 21 right now with one loss. Cincinnati's number four undefeated. Right. I, I, if Cincinnati would have lost Notre Dame, I feel like they would they would be a lot higher higher than 21 right now. And my point is just, like, I feel like they're giving Cincinnati way too much credit based on, like, the past seasons is what I'm trying to say. Like, you know what I mean? Well, I think Cincinnati's, I, you know, Cincinnati, when they beat Notre Dame, if I'm not mistaken, I want to say they were maybe seven or eight, and Notre Dame was like maybe eight or nine, if I remember correctly. So if they would have lost to Notre Dame, I think they would have dropped them probably 15th, 14th or 15th. Right. They, but they, then they would have crept, crept back up. up. Yeah. Insane. Right. But, but my point is they would be a lot higher right now than a one-loss Houston. Sure they would be, yeah. But uh, but Notre Dame, I mean, I don't know. Notre Dame's a higher-ranked team than Texas Tech, but uh, Texas Tech's not ranked, but... I'm just saying, like, I feel like even within their own conference, they value Cincinnati a lot higher than... They do. Because of past season. They do. Teams. You're right. And, and I think... Uh, I guess my point is, if Houston beats Cincinnati, they're, they're, they're both going to have one loss, and Houston just would have beaten the number four team in the country. Correct. 
they should theoretically she should jump up quite a bit, right? They should. I they mean, should, but they're not going to do it. You know, right. I mean, but you're right. But I mean, theoretically, they should jump up ahead of all these ten and two teams, right? They I mean, yeah, they should. I agree. I don't know. They're not going to. But well, I think what you're going to see happen is if is if Houston beats Cincinnati and then wins their bowl game, when the final polls come out, Houston will be will be right up there with one loss. But that's not going to help them any because it really doesn't matter. Um, so I think we're I think we're starting to see some clarity. We know now. Uh, we know now pretty much who's going to be in given certain scenarios and, uh, and and see the thing is the reason I think the reason they didn't put Alabama well it, it really doesn't matter but but Alabama is not going to finish number four either way because yeah. they don't want to rematch with Georgia. Well, yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. They'd yeah. be a rematch with Georgia. You, yeah, they, Plus, I think, like you said, I think dropping them to three. Having one, having beat Auburn, I think shows you that if they have two losses, they're not yeah. going to put them in. And that's why, if they happen to beat, <clears throat> if they happen to beat Georgia <clears throat> by some strange, uh, imag- by some strange fluke, and Michigan wins, I think you'll see Michigan one. I think you'll see Alabama two. I think you'll see Cincinnati three, and Georgia will be four because they don't want Georgia to play Alabama right away. They'll have to play yeah, yeah. in the final if they win, but. You yes, should, you think they do that type of thing? They rank them based on oh, yeah. stuff like that. They won't put. In other words, if they if, if this is just if they were just looking at purely of how they want to rank them, you think they would actually want to put Alabama one if they beat Georgia, but they're not going to just because they don't want them to play Georgia. If they put Alabama one, they'll put Georgia three because they 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 don't want to match I, them. I guess my point is, don't you think they should be ranking teams though, not based on they should future matchups. They, they should, should be ranking them based on what has just occurred. Or they whatever. should, but but again, you got to remember their th- the thinking there then is, hey, you're in, okay. And, and and from a TV standpoint, do you really want to put a game on TV the next week of two teams that just played? Or not in the right. next week, but in the next matchup where right. these two teams just played. When's so, the first playoff? I think it's like right around the New, new Year. Okay. Yeah, so it, it's, I think it's too long. It's it too is. Long. It is. I agree with that. Okay, so so we've pretty much cleared that up. We've talked about the games that are coming up this week. We've, we've talked about the scenarios. Now let's talk about uh, the big elephant in the room here in our last few minutes. Uh, a lot has happened in the coaching carousel. Uh, the first domino to fall was uh, uh, Oklahoma's coach, uh, Lincoln Riley, uh, has decided to leave Oklahoma and become the new head coach at Southern California, USC. Uh, I read an article that said that he, he owns two homes, uh, Lincoln Riley, in Norman, Oklahoma. Southern Cal bought both of those homes at a half million dollars over the asking price. And they bought him a six million dollar home in Southern California in the Los Angeles area. Um, so why does he have two homes in Norman? Uh, who knows? But but they and his contract is astronomical now. And they had to they had to pay Oklahoma they had too. To, they had to pay or... his buyout. That's yeah. exactly right. Um, which shows you you know how bad they want a, a new coach. Don't you I think guess. they could have got a coach who's pretty much the same quality and not had to pay all this money? Probably <laughs> they could have. Probably, but you know you got to remember you're 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 talking about recruits and and he's a good recruiter. And they figured that he can, you know, he can bring in some some really good recruits. I guess. Now the interesting thing, though, is that uh, you know he has struggled at. O- I don't want to say struggled. He's been in the playoff at Oklahoma before, and they've gotten pretty much manhandled by LSU one year. They've been beaten by Alabama pretty badly one year. Uh, I think Alabama clobbered them the year Kyler Murray was was the quarterback at Oklahoma. Um, Georgia. Georgia beat them when uh, Baker Mayfield was out there. The game that you went to. So my point is, I think, I think he sees the writing on the wall. Remember, Oklahoma's going to the SEC in 2025. So I think he said, hey, I've already been hammered by these SEC teams. I don't think I can win a national championship in the SEC. Let me go over to Southern California, where I can definitely win a Pac-12 championship, and I can you know, live you in can a place. live in Southern California. Exactly, Oklahoma. exactly, no exactly. Uh, so, interesting, and that leaves Oklahoma now still trying what, to find a coach. What do you um, think of? Do you think UT fans are worried that their coach is yes, going to Oklahoma? Yes, they are. Uh, because remember, Josh Heupel, who's the coach at, at Tennessee, was the quarterback at Oklahoma when they won the national championship in the year two thousand. He was also an assistant coach there under Bob Stoops. He, after that, wasn't he? The, wasn't he the runner up to the Heisman that he year? He may have been. Like, I don't remember he was in that. The, in the running, I think. yeah, but. He's definitely got Oklahoma ties, and I think they're think, worried about that. You think he would leave? I don't think he's going to leave. I, I think, I don't think so. I, I I think he'll probably stay, but you just don't know. You know, it's hard to say. Um, so yeah, so that's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. And I think I think Lincoln Riley will do a good job at, at Southern Cal. I think he's a good enough recruiter. Uh, 
where I think he's going to lift that program up. It's been in the doldrums now for quite some time, and I think he'll he'll kind of get it back to, to some level of prominence. Uh, <clears throat> then the huge domino fell not long after that, here just a few days ago, when uh, LSU hired Brian Kelly, <laughs> the former Notre Dame coach. And uh, obviously, I'm a little too close to that to really talk uh, too too uh, uh, objectively. Yeah, but... But but I but I think I can and and I think, you know, the interesting thing about about them hiring Brian Kelly is, uh, one, you know, Brian Kelly is the all time winningest coach at Notre Dame. All right, he's been there twelve years. Uh, I think uh, Lou Holtz was there. I want to say one, two, three, four, five, eleven years. Newt Rockney was there twelve years or thirteen years. Uh, Parsegan was there eleven years. So he's been there about the same time as some of these legendary coaches. And he's won 113 games, and uh, Newt Rockney had 105. So he was the num- he was the all-time winningest coach. No coach has ever left Notre Dame. Okay, they've either retired or been fired. No coach in the history of Notre Dame has ever left the program for another program. Now you can say, well, you can laugh at me and say, well, you think Notre Dame's great? No, I'm just saying, I'm just giving you the facts. Okay. So that happened. Now, and then there was rumors that he was going to try to take Marcus Freeman, who was the defensive coordinator that he hired at the end of last year, who is, who is considered by many to be the best recruiter in college football. He has brought in some great recruits for Notre Dame. In fact, he's got a top five recruiting class coming in for next year and a top three recruiting class committed for the year 2023. Kelly tried to get him to come to LSU. He was going to make him the highest paid assistant coach in the country. He tried to get uh, Tommy Reese, who's the offensive coordinator at Notre Dame and who played quarterback at Notre Dame, to come to LSU. But for Notre Dame fans out there, the best thing happened that could have happened, Marcus Freeman's now the head coach, which lends you to believe they can keep their recruiting class. Tommy Reese is going to stay as offensive coordinator. Again, many, many writers and, and, and people following Notre Dame think that that Kelly, uh, Brian Kelly, held Reese down from an offensive standpoint. In other words, that Reese is a better offensive mind than many people saw because Kelly would not let him be as aggressive on offense as he wanted to be. So we'll see. So from a Notre Dame standpoint, I think everything's going to be fine. But what I want to talk with you about is, is why do you think Brian Kelly left Notre Dame? I mean, you've got a team here that, that this is unprecedented. You've got a team, just like we talked about, that could be playing for a national championship this year, theoretically, right? And you've got a team based on the recruiting classes that could could theoretically be a national champion one or two of the next two years. So why would you leave Notre Dame? What do you think? Uh, number one, money. money. I'm sure they paid him a lot of money. I'm sure they know. did. Uh, but number two, I think he's been on the... he's he's had He's had shots... At the national championship before, right? Twenty twelve, and um, what other year they get beat by Clemson? Twenty eighteen, and then last year, twenty twenty. Last year they were in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Were they in the playoffs? Yeah, okay. beat by Alabama. That's right. So he's had he's had chance he's had a run in the playoffs before, and I think he knows that they just they're not gonna they're not gonna win national championship anytime soon. I right. think he realizes that because right. he's had great runs at and they can't do. It. I think he sees they can't compete with these SEC teams. They're not gonna win. So I don't know. I think when he looks at this year. Or even the next couple of years when they're supposed to be even better, I think he looks at it and goes, yeah, well, I'm, we may get to the playoff again, but we're not going to win the national championship. And LSU right now is a lot worse than Notre Dame, but they have a much higher upside. Right. They're an SEC team. They can be, They just won the national championship a couple of years ago. Right. They can be very good. He can right. win multiple national championships with LSU. Yeah, I agree. So I think he's seeing that. Right. And I think he's also seeing, even if he wins the national championship at Notre Dame, I mean, that would be huge, obviously. They haven't won one since, what, 89? 88, 88. But I, I think he's thinking... He has a better chance to win national championship at LSU, and what more can he really prove at Notre Dame? He's the all-time winningest coach. Right. I mean, yeah, he could bring them a national championship, which would be a huge thing, arguably even bigger than the all-time winningest coach. Right. But I don't think he thinks that's possible. Right. Right. I, I agree think this proves that. that he doesn't think that's possible. I, I agree with that. I agree um, with that. Yeah. So I think that's why I was thinking. Do you think in the money? I don't know. Who knows how much money they paid him? At LSU. Well, I I heard that. I heard at Notre Dame he was getting somewhere between three and four million dollars a year. And at LSU, he's going to get nine and a half million. Yeah, and being a head coach in the, well, Notre Dame is a little different because it's Notre Dame, but typically speaking, being a coach in the SEC, head coach gives a lot more weight than any other program. But Notre Dame is different because they're not in the SEC, but they're a huge program. Right. Notre Dame might actually be the, the most, what's the word? Prestigious. Um, prestigious head coaching job, maybe in the world in the country. But. I, I think it is, but then again, I'm a little biased, but but I think. Uh, 
I, you know, here's another thing that I, that I'm glad I remembered to talk about is I think he, I think, I think there was a little bit of, you know, the Notre Dame athletic Court athletic director said that he could sense that Brian Kelly maybe was looking for other opportunities. I think he wanted to be in a conference. I think last year when Notre Dame played in the ACC last year, I think it helped Notre Dame a lot because they played in the championship game. Now, granted, they lost it, but I think that helps Notre Dame, and I think he wanted to be in a conference, and Notre Dame's not going to be in a conference, okay? And then everything you said, I think, applies as well. I think he saw, hey, what more can I do at Notre Dame? You know, I don't think we were going to ever going to have the players right. to compete with a Georgia or an Alabama or a team like that, uh, <clears throat> so he moved on. I think the problem for Brian Kelly is going to be twofold. You and I both... Both have talked about Ed Orgeron. Ed Orgeron is a perfect fit for LSU, okay? I mean, the guy's right out of the bayou. I don't see Brian Kelly fitting down there. I mean, he's a very prim and proper, you know, sip your Coke. And that. And, and LSU is not that kind of a school. And, and I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he'll be real successful. But then again, you look at Notre Dame. <clears throat> yeah, they play a good schedule. But they don't play Auburn, Alabama, Georgia, uh, right. you know, Texas A&M. I mean, he's going to have week after week after week of, of games that could go either way. And and I think it's going to be tough. I really do. It's also going to be week after week after week of primetime big games that where, he's in, where they're in the spotlight. That's right. Notre Dame has a couple of games a year where it's real big. Other than that, they're playing Pittsburgh at 3 p.m. On, like, no one cares. I mean, but see, here's the here's the thing, too. If he goes, let's say, let's say at Notre Dame, which is, this has been proven. Let's say you go 9-1 nine and, nine and one or 10-1 and one, and you lose your last game to Stanford or Southern Cal, and you're ten and two. Notre Dame fans are not going to—they're going to be upset, but nobody's going to jump down your throat. Right. If he goes ten and two and loses a couple years in a row to Alabama, they're going to be upset. You know, because if you do that, you're not going to win the West, and if you don't win the West, you're not going to be playing for the conference championship. Yeah, I think the stuff you said about how he didn't seem to fit in down there will. I think that 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 could be the um, the reason he's run out quicker than maybe he should be. But if he wins, no, it doesn't no, matter. Doesn't matter. No, obviously. doesn't matter. But yeah. He has a shorter lease than like Ordron would have, I think. Which I'm surprised they really got rid of Ordron. I am too. too. He's like a perfect fit down there. He just won the last championship a couple years ago. Yeah, I think there was some other things yeah, going on there. Probably yeah, probably was. Yeah. But um, where's he going? Is it about enough? Not yet. No, he hasn't. Nobody's hired him yet. Yeah. No name should hire him. Yeah, right. <laughs> Talk about not not a good fit. <laughs> Swap coaches. You know, but. Uh, but yeah, so so it was. It, I'm glad Notre Dame has settled on Marcus Freeman only because it was really an unprecedented situation. And I think what pushed Notre Dame to settle on Marcus Freeman is I heard where the con- college football committee chairman, which this is ridiculous, said that they have a provision in their charter that says that when they get to this last vote come the end of the season, that if a if a marquee player is hurt and can't participate or a coach is leaves or can't that they have the ability to factor that in as to whether that team should be in the playoff. Uh, and I'm thinking that's ridiculous. Okay. You should do it based on that team's performance. Right. right. So I think they were kind of hinting that, Hey, Brian Kelly's gone. You don't have a coach. Maybe you're not going to get in. Okay. Uh, so who knows? And that maybe that's, maybe that's the answer to why they jumped uh, Notre Dame, uh, Oklahoma State over Notre Dame. Because uh, remember, that vote came out Tuesday night, and that was already given that he was leaving. When did the college football committee say that stuff? Like, like After the vote came out Tuesday night. Oh, they said that stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that's interesting. Yeah, I think that's that, why they jumped him. That, again, shows you what you just said, that they, they, look, at, they look at future matchups right. more than they look at, up to this point, who did who deserves what right. ranking. Right, you know I mean? right, which is Which is ridiculous. It I is think. ridiculous. Uh, it uh, is ridiculous. I think they need to go back to some the BCS system just do the bcs with the four playoff teams because right. they never did that before they did the bcs to determine right the uh top two teams right but right. not four I don't know. well we'll get into that at another point but uh but anyway let's uh let's wrap it up for today and, and uh, uh obviously we've had a lot to talk about we've previewed next week's games we've talked about the coaching changes we've talked about who we think is going to have a chance to get in. I'm looking forward to next week's show nathan because next week we'll have we'll, we'll know who's in the playoff We'll know the results of the games that are coming up this weekend, and then you and I can sit there and kind of analyze those matchups and kind of see what we think and, and what we don't think based on what happened at the end of the season. So it, next week will be a, an interesting show uh, from that perspective, and then, of course, we'll come back on uh, prior to the playoff uh, to talk some more about uh, how things are going. So uh, 
Another great week in college football. We're getting close to the to the end. Uh, we're getting close to who's going to be in the playoff and uh, crowning another national champion. So hope you enjoyed our show this week. Remember, uh, hit us up on Twitter at PressBoxPod. Uh, we're trying to put as much stuff up there as we can. Remember to 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 if you haven't already subscribed to the Press Box podcast and you're listening to this because you found it or someone uh, told you to listen to it, go ahead and subscribe to it. Uh, lots of great content. Uh, our NFL preview show, or uh, excuse me, our NFL recap show each week. And then, of course, uh, coming up here with uh, college football playoffs and the NFL playoffs coming up real soon as well. Uh, also, Instagram, at PressBoxPod. Hit us up there. Check us out there. And, of course, on YouTube, the PressBox Podcast channel, where Nathan does a fantastic job of putting up content on there uh, for you to listen to and enjoy. So uh, so that's the PressBox Podcast for this week. We've enjoyed having you. And uh, we'll see you again next time on the PressBox Podcast. Mm-hmm.